This video is all about using body filler. I'm going to tell you everything I've learned using this product over the last 20 years in the vehicle restoration business. The car I'm restoring is a Series 2 Alfa Romeo Spider and I've primed all the bare steel with Mipa Epoxy Primer. The fillers that I'll be using are Upol Easy 1 and Upol Easy 3. There are a few contours on this car that will be a challenge to get right, but let's first start with the part of the car that will be easier. Before we begin, this is where I've already made progress and I want to show you the depth of the filler. The coating thickness tool is measuring thickness to the steel in microns. One micron is one millimeter divided by 1000, so 1000 microns is one millimeter. Notice how no part of the panel exceeds 1.5 millimeters of filler depth, and this is the aim with restoration. To keep the amount of filler required to the lowest you can, I can't restore a car without the use of filler, as is true with 95% of car restorers. The use of filler got a bad name because it had been used in the past on bodge repairs. Filler is an excellent product if used correctly. It will make the car look amazing and will last forever without any issues, but only if used in the right way. This is a part I want to fill. It's a panel I welded in and there's a butt welded joint. Before applying the filler, the epoxy needs to be sanded with 180 grit paper. The data sheet advises this if applying over paint and 80 grit if applying over bare steel. We can see the high spots as the paint was taken off, but this isn't a problem. Here is the product data sheet where it shows the advised sandpaper grades for preparation. It shows the mixing ratio, which is 2% by weight, but there is some leeway on this and it depends what the day temperature is. Going by the data sheet, a 3% ratio will give you seven to eight minutes to get the product on and another 20 minutes before you can sand it. I know from experience that 3% will be too fast for me, so I'm going to go for 2% at its temperature. And this is what a 2% hardener ratio looks like. You can guess this stuff, but if you measure it properly, you know what time you will have, and this is helpful to know according to what size panel you are filling. Small sections, you can use a 3% ratio. Large sections, you would be better off using a 1% ratio. Choosing the right ratio will save you time and help you do this job, so why not measure it? I'm applying the filler in a direction away from the body swage. If you do it towards the body swage, you won't get the buildup of filler on the edge of the swage. So best to do it this way around. I wash the filler spreader off with thinners. I would advise wearing gloves throughout this whole process, and I should be too. Onion boards, if you haven't seen them, are such a great idea. So much better than anything else I've used. While that's curing, might as well prep the next section to be filled. Give the area a scrape with your fingernail to test it's ready for sanding. It's had 20 minutes, so should be about right. The sanding will be carried out using a 420mm by 70mm hook and loop block and 80 grit paper. The method of sanding I use an X pattern. I try to avoid any straight lines as these can cause lines in your panel. Keep the block moving and vary where your X pattern is taking place. If you keep everything random and non-uniform, you won't create any flats or lines. Here are all the low spots. I need to stop sanding at this point because the high is becoming too pronounced. This is something some people struggle with, knowing when to stop and when to, to continue sanding. Now we have the high spots both ends of the repair section, it's time to stop sanding. A high spot like this needs to be knocked down a little. It's much quicker to fill a low spot than trying to bring up the rest of the panel up to the height of the high spot, so knock them down. Use an airline to blow off the dust before the next skim. With a high crown panel, a block that you can curve will keep the curve that we want. It will keep it uniform, which a flat block will not. It might be possible with a flat block, but it will be more difficult. I'm sanding edges with a flat block, and the tight radius corner needs to be done with a block of similar radius. Like I did with the filler applied away from the body swage line, the same rule applies to edges. Apply at the edge and spread away from that edge. You want to build a sharp corner. This helps with seeing if the corner is uniform. The sharp edge can be taken off later. Back to the other section now. We are getting there, but discovering a bigger area that needs work. If you run your hand across the panel, you can feel undulations, but there is a trick to increasing the sensitivity of what you can feel. Fold some tissue paper and use that between your hand and the body. It makes a big difference. I think it's something to do with removing the roughness because the same thing happens if you were to sand with a finer grade paper. 
Now onto the point where I can't feel any undulations, but to verify that I'm using dry powder guide coat. It's quick and won't clog paper. I prefer it over the spray type guide coats. We can see the low spots that I didn't detect by hand. I think one more skim should be somewhere near, but you can get to the point where you have had enough and it just want it done. You might find that you try to convince yourself that it's flat when deep down you know it's not. Best to move on to the next section at this stage because you'll come back later with fresh eyes and renewed enthusiasm for putting in another skim. I move the door up slightly. This has aligned the bottom swage better and the top one needs to be adjusted by adding some filler to the wing. To help yourself see if a swage line is straight, use guide coat. Sand off the guide coat on one section at a time and visually check the straightness and alignment of the swage line. Apply the guide coat and sand the bottom section and then check. Then apply the guide coat and sand the top section and then check. After seeing so many skims of filler going into this wing, you may think it's thick with filler, but it's barely one millimeter thick. I'd say anything up to two millimeters thick is a decent repair job. Another thing to help with getting nice swage lines is to use masking tape. Fill up to the masking tape and remove it before the filler dries. You'll still want to use the guide coat when sanding. The swage lines on this car have a radius which changes in size along the length of the car. At the rear it's very small and at the centre it's very large. I'm using a 6mm steel rod to form the radius on the rear section. You have to do a few passes back and forth to get the straight radius and then smooth out the tram lines with the cross hatching method. The last thing to do will be to remove the sharp edges into a suitable corner radius. You can make radius gauges if you want it perfect. A radius that's too large or too small is quite easy to spot so worth taking the time in my opinion. When all the easy one filling is complete then it's time for easy three. This is a finishing filler that's mixed and applied in the same way but its purpose is to fill pinholes and sanding scratches. It's harder to sand and won't leave such deep scratches. You also sand it with 180 grit and not 80 grit and finish it with 240 grit before primer. Paintwork that you can see sanding scratches in is sometimes due to not using a finishing filler. A lot of people still think that filler in a car is a bad thing, but it's not at all if it's used as intended. Make sure the surface is key before applying and keep the thickness as low as you can. Cracks in filler only occurs when these rules aren't followed. Any panel joints need to be seam sealed, so sand the filler out of the joint and apply sealant. The body will flex slightly in these areas and seam it like tiger seal needs to be used. I hope this helps and please comment with any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Bye for now.